Hi, I'm Alicia Robotham, owner of AR Bespoke Textiles and designer in residence at London's Cockpit Arts, and you are watching A Student's Perspective. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of A Student's Perspective. My name is Natalia Colasurdo and hi Alicia, I'm really excited to talk to you today. Um, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and who you are? Sure, um, so I graduated from Central St Martins last year with a textile BA and um, I registered my business about three months ago um, as Alicia Robotham as a sole trader. I'm now doing interior projects um, such as the Barclay Hotel in London um, and uh, working with interior design companies to uh, create bespoke interiors for uh, luxury um, hotels and restaurants in London. Very, very um, nice. Yes. Um, so would you mind telling us a little bit about your time at school and what was it like studying your major? Um, so I firstly I did a foundation course before I did uh, my degree okay. so I moved to um, the Midlands of England to Leeds and did a foundation course which uh, was in art and design so it's like an art and design diploma for a year um, before I then went and moved to London and studied my textile um, textile degree there at Central St Martins. Um, so I've had kind of two different experiences of uh, living in two different parts of the country while studying, um, both really different and um, both pretty formative. But I think living in London and studying in London has been um, quite in integral to my kind of starting up my business so young, I'm only 23. Um, so it's kind of opened up business connections within the city that I might not have had if I had studied elsewhere. Right. Did uh, you know you wanted to study in London with textiles back when you were doing your foundation studies? Uh, yeah, so I actually um, applied for the course and didn't get into the course. And then I went and did a, a year out um, at this in uh, the foundation course. And then I tried again and got in the second time. <laughs> so I, I was always determined to get into the course. Right. That's no matter what. So I think um, you kind of yeah, having that plan that you knew you wanted to do, it was something that definitely drove you throughout that foundation design. Yeah. Would you say you carried a lot of those same skills that you learned in your foundation into when you uh, applied it for London? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think when you do a foundation, I don't know whether it's similar where you are, but um, when you do a foundation here, it's kind of, it's nothing like um, uh, college or like right. sixth form. It's, it's, it kind of, it's difficult to describe it, but it kind of just um, frees you up a little bit and kind of changes your perspective on, on design and the design world. And, and kind of takes you back to basics. Right, it breaks you... down all those notions that somebody might have yeah. had preconceived before even going. Yeah, sure. That's kind um, of interesting. To know. Yeah, it's. I think it's 
it's like in the UK, it's definitely, definitely recommended to do a foundation if you're going to do an art major or art degree, um, just because it does break down those barriers that you, you kind of pick up along the way from doing um, art studies at school. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think it, it's, it definitely completely changed, changed my perspective before, before applying to go for my degree, definitely. Awesome. So I guess digging a bit more into what you do now, um, you started your own, now you're an own uh, solo company, right? You would say you just started your own about three months ago. What kind of yeah. drove you to start up your own thing right now? Was there ever a moment where you <laughs> knew that you were determined to start something right away? Um, yeah, into so place? it kind of, it kind of fell into place. I mean, it was, it was initially supposed to, we were supposed to start at the beginning of the year and then everything happened with Corona. So that kind of um, stilted everything. But I um, won an award for a studio space in London for three years. So it kind of was all fitting into place. So I just thought, right, it's kind of now or never. So if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. <laughs> but you took that uh, shot. I think that's really uh, important yeah. to know and uh, emphasize for sure that you saw this gateway and you knew it was that the opportunity to take it and you kind of yeah. with it. Yeah. Um, so you kind of specialize, you can kind of dig into your way of thinking. Um, you are very involved in the high fashion in regards to like the environmental impacts it has, right? Like yeah. that your main polls um i it's actually it's interesting because it's it's completely unrelated to my business now um, um i'm in entirely luxury interiors based now and um and more furniture design and product design now mm -hmm. but my degree um my degree show was kind of it has taken a, a, a like quite a big influence it's like influence a lot of the work that i do now so people often think that i'm fashion based but i'm actually not exactly so, so yeah it, let's talk about those differences and i guess why are they kind of labeling you underneath that but we can kind I of think, talk about um, our multifaceted industry yeah so i mean i my degree was in textile design so it was never specialized in fashion or interiors it was it's more like material exploration and that material kind of, design a little bit of both you know it really yeah it, into it both could be anything i mean it could be interiors for a house. It could be the interiors of a car. Like it could be it fashion for, you know, it could be functional fashion or it could be high end fashion. That's the kind of broadness of um, textiles. But my, within my university, CSM is very, very fashion based. It's, um, okay. it's kind of got this long running history of um, incredible, uh, fashion designers that have been alumni of the school so it kind of has that air about it so I think you almost pushed in a certain direction yeah. um, being part of the school so I definitely think that was kind of what happened with me but my my final collection from my degree was it was it was basically a concept collection it was basically just to show people what you can do with um waste from the um textile industry right so just like you implementing those overlooked materials that were waste, yeah that were considered yeah. wasteful yes so it was it was kind of more of a concept idea um rather than an actual viable kind of like high-end fashion brand um because that's not that doesn't really interest me massively i'm not really um in that section of design at all right you're just more provoking i feel like that thought yeah i think it's it was it was more about the material rather than the product because i mean yeah it's um yeah it was it was it was definitely more concept collection yeah, rather than definitely that. strike some designers or um fashion designers as to you know where were they getting those materials from or yeah something that yeah. I definitely noted and I think that's why you kind of have that pull between the two industries yeah yeah I think so um but no it's, it is interesting it's it's kind of organically grown in the other direction of going into interiors and more um like spatial design which is what I actually love to do but 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's interesting how people can get ideas from seeing like a fashion collection or an accessories collection and they can in, they can kind of um, imagine it in a space rather than on a person, which is kind of how my business has developed in the last year um, from that final collection at university. Yeah, I think scale has a lot to do with what you do. You kind of design on a a multitude of scales, whether it be product design or uh, relating this product into an actual space and how how does that correlate or respond or react to one another? Sure, yeah. So your exploration into materials really, um, I think, helps you with those sides and definitely enhances the work that you do as far as interiors is concerned, because we all know material yeah. is a big part of design and what we do. Um, so mm. what does the word, I have a question, what does the word style mean to you? How would you define the role of somebody who styles or is a stylist? Um, interesting. I think, I, yeah. I think it's kind of um, all relative to content, like context. But I think um, in a kind of, well, it's it's personal, isn't it? I don't think there's any one way of, of styling something or one way of being. That's That then becomes a trend. Mm-hmm. I think styling is, I think it's also learned as well, and it comes from experience. And I think I'm sure you feel the same. Like you probably would have styled something completely different at the beginning of your degree to the end of your degree, Mm -hmm. or you would have, your tastes have changed and developed. And um, I think it's constantly evolving. It's kind of difficult to pinpoint. Yeah. Kind of evolving with our experiences as we do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I just thought of that word style and how it kind of is repeated a lot throughout the different industries within the, fashion industry somebody has a certain sure. style or style of clothing and then go yeah. into d- interiors and somebody could be styling the room as far as staging and how does that correspond to the designs that we're doing so I just figured that was a really interesting word and how it's kind of used a lot yeah how well that reacts to one another um can you tell us about your collection waste not want not what we were talking about yeah sure and how that kind of yeah evolved or got started yeah so that was my um final degree collection when i was still studying um last year Mm -hmm. and it was basically it all kind of came about when i visited um around three factories in the uk that were producing textiles on like a mass production scale Mm -hmm. in the uk um because in the midlands in the uk we have quite a historical textile industry Mm -hmm. and really old mills that have been going for like 400 years so it's really amazing to go and visit them just to see them because they're kind of like working museums they have all of these old all of the old equipment and it's just really fascinating and some of the people have been working there for like 25 years and I went there unrelated to the materials I went there just to look at the at the mills and the factories um, and the first thing I noticed was the like, incredible amount of waste that was being produced but on a constant basis. And so they didn't have, the infrastructure. yeah, it's just, they didn't have the infrastructure to get rid of it in like a more economic way. So I kind of suggested, is there a way that it could be kind of boxed up and sent out to schools or sent out to universities in the country and people are, given kind of briefs with that new material um, just because it was getting put in a skip and taken to landfill so it was it wasn't any skin off their nose to give it to students and if anything it was actually doing them a favor Mm -hmm. because it was taking away their rubbish for them Um, and for me for them it was kind of for them it was waste and rubbish that they were throwing away it was a byproduct for them obviously because it couldn't be made into anything that they could sell anymore Mm -hmm. but for me it was a material like I work a lot with really high quality Italian silk and I probably wouldn't have been able to as a student I definitely wouldn't have been able to afford firstly afford that um, raw material and secondly probably get my hands on it in that quantity 
So for me, it was a win-win because I wasn't paying for the material and they were getting rid of their waste. Um, but I didn't see it as waste at all. I saw it as a whole collection of, of materials and I did, didn't yeah. have to pay for anything. So it was, that was kind of where it all started um, in my degree. And that's what kind of um, where that collection was born. Yeah, I think it's, it is definitely something that's followed me into my commercial work now, only because people are really interested in having like luxurious textiles that are, that look really luxurious and new and amazing. And then the, the, in the small print, it says, and this was made from waste, you know, like people were really fascinated by that. So that's the kind of um, the notion of my business in a sense, but it's also, it's not just reusing materials. It's also avoiding mass production and keeping it bespoke, keeping it slow and um, keeping it kind of unique to each project as well. That's, that's kind of how you can avoid uh, mass waste yeah, problems right. working on a small scale. But yeah. How would you say you um, kind of, like, I'll switch it over, kind of is collaboration important in what you do? Do you find it, yeah. that it was important back in school and do you find it important now having your own business? I'd say, Collaboration is is completely key, especially if you're collaborating with a kind of higher power, which is always <laughs> handy because it kind of gets your foot in the door with bigger clients and that can really help at the beginning of business. But um, throughout university, we're, we were definitely encouraged to collaborate, but I don't think it was more kind of you're going out on, the, on your own, like this is your own yeah. collections, this is your own work, like you need to be working on your own. Um, which I think can sometimes be, can sometimes lead to like a competitive environment, which can be quite dangerous, dangerous. especially <laughs> in fashion, especially in like, you know, my university was kind of, um, yeah, it's just like so competitive. Oh yeah, the there's that notion, it's just in the design industry, so that can be yeah. that cutthroatness, shall I say, you know, and that's definitely yeah. something that we're always trying to hopefully break or hopefully try and see the better I sides in. <laughs> I, know. Oh, I, feel I like, was always worried about that first going into yeah. online school. But. I kind of realized after a while, I think in the first couple of years of uni, you're kind of always looking over thinking, oh God, am I doing the right thing or comparing yourself to everyone else? And then what I've realized being in business on my own is also you, you're actually just competing with yourself. You're, you should be competing with yourself, like trying to better yourself, mm -hmm. not looking at other people's work. Cause it's, it can get, you can drown in other people's work. It can be really, really daunting. <laughs> it's good to have aspirations, but it's also um, really bad to compare to other people all the time. And that's why we're but, having this conversation, you know, to really let the kids know yeah. and everyone's studying, like, it's okay, like, yeah. to just be confident in yourself and your work, you know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yourself, I mean, I university is hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. university is hard, especially in the design industries. I think it's often seen as a soft subject or it's seen as, you know, oh, they're just doing something, you know, just for the sake of going to university or like just for the sake of doing a degree. And it's crafts, like, no, yes. <laughs> you know, everything around you has been designed. Everything around you is from one of these people at university designing or curating or, you know, building. So I, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's a stigma, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. kind of follows you. But um, yeah. I don't know. So. Yeah, what would you say uh, one of your favorite collaborations or collections were with anybody or anybody else besides? Um, what in within myself? Or? Yeah, 
within your within your uh, line of work or any other projects that you've done with other people that you've collaborated with? Um, yeah, I think I think probably what I'm working on right now is um, my most exciting project to date. I think yeah. um, I'd say, but that's kind of more on a personal like achievement level for me personally. But I would also say in throughout university, we did quite a few client briefs with um, with fashion houses or with like we did one with Inditex for Zara Home and we did one with Eden for the LVMH group and um, like suiting companies. So we really kind of got a broad scope of working um, in the industry within fashion or interiors as textile designers. And um, that was probably my most formative um, collaborations through studying. Right. Just because it, they kind of laid it out in a certain way that it was, you'd pre you'd present your work and it was all, you know, yeah. mind you, it's not really like that in, in reality. Like it's not yeah. so fluffed up like that in reality. Um, yeah. But they don't, I mean, they don't teach like, you that in school. <laughs> no, that would be my biggest, biggest complaint would be I, have learned I learned throughout my degree nothing about business nothing that's and I can say the same thing um I think they should with any type of design degree yeah. you should know business that should be yeah that should be a already set in stone minor or other study because that's how you survive they teach you how to design but okay yep. well, how do I start my own business how do I become an individual sure. designer you know we're kind of we shouldn't be training people to work for other people you know we should be training them to yeah exactly really be strong people so it was only through my internships and experiences that um, you take upon yourself that you learn a lot of the other sides yeah the, the yeah, real so life full, experiences absolutely i can yeah. totally attest to that <laughs> um, yeah i think i i find it um i now have as part of my award for this studio i have a business mentor and i've never had anything kind of business related like this ever throughout my entire studies and we often talk about how there needs to be some kind of um there needs to be almost like a new um oh, what's the word <laughs> um curriculum yeah sorry yeah yeah new curriculum, like fully for mm -hmm. like functionality in business and actually making money Mm -hmm. and trying to turn your your like design talent into making money because you can it's totally possible but it's mm -hmm. it's it's um it's really difficult if you're starting from square one and having to learn everything yourself that's what I found mm -hmm. absolutely and of. if you're yeah especially in this industry where you have those notions where people okay are they willing to help me like you know let's say in an yeah. office environment Okay, like it, it helps a lot of people are willing to help each other out and people are you just kind of have to ask and like be that person and really set the tone. For the yeah, industry and wherever you are working. Yeah. <laughs> so where would you see the industry going within the next five to 10 years or if you can make that kind of presumption now or where would you like to see the industry? <laughs> yeah. What about the that, materials? Would that be in materials or within just interiors or specifically for what you're doing? I think, um, I honestly think it's so different in different sectors and it's, it's kind of, um, it's another thing that you have to kind of become a bit more aware of when you're going into business on your own is kind of predicting the market within the next year, which is a, a big task. It's actually mm -hmm. really difficult, especially considering everything that's happened this year, it's kind of, that horrible word, unprecedented time. Um, so it's all kind of up in the air at the moment, but the way that I see materials going, I mean, it's reusing materials. I think it's kind of like almost going back in time actually, because people are thinking, oh, this like reusing materials or using, getting the most out of the material is this new, is this new idea. Yeah. It's really not. It's, it's like post-war idea, like idealism. Mm -hmm. It's getting the most out of your, you know, produce from the shop. It's getting the most out of your clothes. It's getting the most out of um, your bedding or your furniture by repairing. And, yeah, and it's kind um, of funny how to see that come back yeah. kind of as a trend. <laughs> yeah, but this is the thing. 
it will come back as a trend yeah it that's it, that's the kind of annoying part of it because it is it will come back as a trend but it's whether it, those kind of idealisms will stick with people exactly we don't want it to be a trend we want it to be a, a, a way of thinking a solid way yeah. yeah but i do i do think in terms of the in terms of fashion i do think i hope i that people will move away from fast fashion. I, I do kind of think that it might be taking a turn now, and um, people are realizing um, how shocking it is to, you know, buy a dress for three pounds and you know mm-hmm. get it delivered to you the next day, and it's all just it, it's unnecessary. I think now that everyone's at home in lockdown, <laughs> everyone's doesn't need their um, cheap party dresses or anything like that. It really so. forced people to see a lot of things, I think, that they wouldn't have seen yeah. if we, the world kept on going as fast as it has. But, <laughs> yeah, I do uh, fear that it will just go back to how it was and it'll go back to full speed, like craziness again. I, I hope, I hope that we've all learned some valuable lessons. Yeah. Um, when I say we, I mean the massive big companies. Um, <laughs> and you know yeah. uh, everyone but it's 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 tricky i don't know absolutely yeah so before we go i have another question to ask you if you could sure um give your former student self advice what would it be this is a good question this is a great question um so much <laughs> there is so much i would i would say i'd Listen say to get- us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Yes, listen, um, it's uh, real life experience is the most valuable thing that you could get throughout your degree, wherever you can find it, whether that's working for like a family friend or someone that you know doing something even slightly similar to what you want to do, just so you can, even if you don't like it by the end of working for them, you can cross that out and then now you know that you don't like it. Like throughout my um degree I was working for I was working for a fast fashion uh, company uh, one of the biggest ones in Europe and I worked there for three years as a stylist and it was um, it was it was it was okay but it was also like really not what I wanted to do so I, I kind of it was great whilst to earn a bit of money throughout university but I could cross it off the list of things I wanted to do by the end of it so and I knew know that I would never go back to an environment like that so yeah get as better yourself by just making that decision yeah. and the fact that you knew that but you would not have Absolutely, known that yeah. if you didn't go you know if I didn't go yeah I probably would have still been kind of um idolizing that industry and been like aiming for it but once you're in it it's actually it's not that great and then um I would also say kind of any extra workshops on business skills I wish there was more at my university but honestly anything even if you're doing it outside of uni I would do it because like it it helps so much when when you're when you're having to do your own taxes and your own finances (laughs) it sounds daunting but it's better to get it over and done with before you actually have to do it like you know Mm -hmm. get the knowledge in the bank before you actually have you know to have to write all your own invoices and get all these subcontract people and all this kind of business uh stuff (laughs) (laughs) get get the experience first because it that will be really handy yeah thank you so much alicia i totally agree with you 100 percent on your last advice to students um as a former student myself, I can agree with you totally and wholeheartedly. And uh, yeah, yeah, I hope they hear this and really take notes on this because it's a truly wonderful opportunities and industries that anybody can go into if they take these if they take these chances. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Um, you too. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, guys. This has been another episode of a student's perspective. Bye. Bye, bye.